We hear a lot about deliberate practice, right? Some of us even read books about it. But why aren't we teaching it in schools as a fundamental skill? Why haven't we all learned how to do it for music, theater, science, math, sports, debate club, anything, actually everything? And all of us can do it if we want, even though we were never taught it in school. There are many misunderstandings about using cognitive science in day-to-day -day teaching and learning. Seriously, in 1988, and that's five years before the first deliberate practice study was published, a researcher published an article in a scientific journal going on and on about why the education system had not adopted a proven tool of learning called spacing. He tried to figure it out, but here we are over 30 years later, and it's still not being taught in school to kids. When it comes to deliberate practice, one really common reason to reject it comes up, and it has nothing to do with the accuracy of the science or the benefit it produces, so people believe it but still have an objection. This myth is what stands in the way some of the time. The way deliberate practice is introduced, and I introduce it this way too, is to use the original study. The takeaway was that high achievers had engaged in many thousands of hours of a type of work the researchers named deliberate practice. I'll highlight world-class performers like Mozart, Tom Brady, Tiger Woods, or Lennon and McCartney, and show how anyone could do the insane amount of focused work for years and years and years and achieve the same. I should probably mention here that the 10,000 hour rule is a common misunderstanding, first perpetuated by the author Malcolm Gladwell in the book Outliers. That is for another day, but it was manufactured to help market the book and make it a bit more interesting. I make the point that everyone should be doing deliberate practice. As I said at the beginning, why aren't we teaching this to all students and ourselves? Then the seed of the myth is planted. I hear it most commonly from parents and teachers. I don't need my kid or students or myself to be Mozart or Tiger Woods. I don't need to be working like crazy on some particular skill for 20 plus hours a week. I just want my child to, and for years by the way, I just want my kid to get decent grades and I want to do a decent job at work and that'll make us happy. And that makes total sense. But they've only heard the, you can do what they did with the same amount of work part. They didn't hear the, we figured out what they do to get better every step of the way and you can do as much of that as you want to part. Do you want to pass that algebra class with flying colors or play really well at the gig this weekend? Well, that is nothing close to putting in the hours to be a national merit scholar or to play cello like Yo-Yo Ma or sing like Yo-Yo Ma's Ma. She was an opera singer. Just a few hours of deliberate practice a month will do wonders. We can do this in all of our classes, sports practices, rehearsals, personal practice, whatever. There's no need to put the rest of one's life on hold to try and be the next super duper best in the world at something. Deliberate practice isn't just for the elite. It isn't only to become Tiger Woods. To paraphrase the excellent book, Talent is Overrated, do a little and get good. Do more and get great. Do a lot of it and be world class. Why not try doing five minutes of it in every practice session? You'll notice the difference within a week and likely less. Sure, it's more intense to focus like that, but it will take less time for way better results, so there's plenty of time for rest and relaxation. You don't have to change your whole life just to do deliberate practice and get results. Also, as we build knowledge to get better, we also build the learning process, so it becomes easier and easier. And think about the immediate benefit of making practice more efficient. Much more done in much less time. This can actually allow people to practice less and get better than before. Start with that, and if we stay there, then great, enjoy the ride. If there's motivation to do more, which is very likely to happen without any further intervention, then do more, whatever makes you happy. And you'll find that getting good, so good that it surprises you makes you happier than you ever imagined. So you'll likely want to do more to get more of that feeling, and then it will make you even happier. I call this the upward spiral of deliberate practice. So what should we do? We should learn the fundamentals of deliberate practice, like that it requires we find solutions even if those solutions are wrong. Learn from that and try again. Not for large projects, that's not so much practice per se, it's more performing. But for the moment-to-moment -moment work we do in the practice room, or athletic field, or studying. 
minute to minute. What did I just learn? Did I understand it? Should I go back and check a section to understand it better? Sounds annoying, doesn't it? Well, that's what I call the burn of learning or the blurn. Feel the blurn. Do it for a while and the blurn becomes less intense and we get used to working that way. In fact, it not only becomes easier, but fun. It becomes fun because we get better and better and smarter at what we are doing. Doing just a little deliberate practice will do that and the brain loves getting better at stuff. Seriously, wouldn't it be cool to dominate that performance, ace that test, win that game in crunch time? That's what will start to happen in small ways at first, then larger. Let passion, your own passion, dictate how much of the work is done after we start working that way. If we want to do a little, which will still put us head and shoulders above most others, then fine. If we love the massive improvement and want to do more, then have at it. It has been clear to me in decades of teaching, and the scientific literature supports this, that getting better at stuff creates a passion to learn more about that stuff, specifically motivation. Could this be where all learning passion comes from? Is none of it inborn but influenced from a very young age? I'm not sure, but I have my suspicions. Even a little deliberate practice has other benefits like inculcating a growth mindset naturally, which will help with all practice, make it more enjoyable, and this mindset can be transferred to all other learning. It's easy to believe in oneself when we know how to find solutions. We will learn to engage in flow states and any anxiety we have in performing, whether on a test, stage, field, or court, will reduce with no extra effort. It will also build an ever-strengthening mental model, which will make all future steps go more quickly. There's really no reason not to give it a try. Do a little and keep it up for a few days or a week. You'll notice the difference. I'm Greg Goodhart, the learning coach, and you've got all the talent you need. So get to work, huh?